We had just a little bit of rain overnight, but not a lot. I sure wish it wasn't so humid out here. Looking good. Us girls keep her okay yesterday? Yeah, y'all did a really good job. All right. Good morning, Ruby. I had absolutely no idea that they had scraped uh, Judd Parkway here by South Park leading into uh, to town, our normal morning route. I just had absolutely no clue. Uh, they did this overnight last night because to be clear, I came home this way yesterday. So I guess they're going to repave this too. Oh joy. Thankfully it appears that they, you know, dusted okay after they, after they scraped it up. It's uh, 76 out there this morning, quite humid, like I said, it feels, I'm sure, uh, 80. <laughs> and uh, we got a 50% chance of summer thunderstorm variety storms today. I'm sure some of these clouds are going to uh, burn off this morning and then, you know, as the afternoon approaches, the storms pop up. I uh, am headed to take Ruby to Tesla just as soon as I drop Johnny off for her service appointment to get the squeak fixed. <laughs> I hate to be parted from Ruby, but I'm desperate to get the squeak fixed, so uh, there's that. <laughs> I am not sure about a loaner car, and I'm not sure about their ability to fix her in one day. I guess I'll find out some more details when I get up there. If they have a loaner for me, great. If they don't, uh, uh, you know, Don will just come grab me. I know that um, Don's out for his run right now, trying to get that over with for the day. Johnny's dressed for well-dressed Wednesday of the day, the first shirt and tie day of the year. Yep, no sign of those clouds clearing yet. It's 7.09. We're headed into downtown with plenty of time this morning. It's good driving when the light's not too bright, but I miss the sun. Since Tesla was kind enough to give me the tracking number um, for my parts delivery package, I was able to go in just now, meant to do it yesterday, and confirm that the parts were delivered on uh, Monday at uh, 1.50 in the afternoon. So, obviously, I didn't try to schedule service for yesterday because Michelle and I were shopping and I didn't want to schedule it for a Tuesday. But it's there, so uh, no reason not to head to Tesla. My appointment's for 8.45 a.m., but I did warn them that I would probably get there early. Thing is about this estimate is traffic is really growing right now, so uh, you can kind of predict that uh, I might get there a little bit later than what it says. But uh, 13 miles and 30 minutes, if that sounds about right. They gave me a choice between an X to drive today. This is Ruby. This is my loner. Or an older model S. And I told them I'd like to drive the S. But they gave me a choice, so cool. This is Elon Tusk's, I think they said. So this S has the non-existent console. And I actually really like that I can just put my bag right there. That's Aaron's already driving Ruby around to the back. So when you get in another Tesla, until they are able to make it so that your profile follows you everywhere, um, you gotta go through, I'm used to creep, you gotta go through and make sure that um, everything is like you expected. I would not take off unless it was an emergency in a Tesla without um, just, you know, double checking what's going on with uh, the settings. It's just... Uh, it's just a, you know, thing to do. Changing it to how I'm used to. As best as I can remember. I like my screen bright. Don't mess with my screen. Um, no, just, you know. I don't save energy. I just want the car to work in the best possible, best possible format. So... This car has close to 100,000 miles on it. Mm 
can't enable that on this car. I've got 219 miles of range, so yeah, it wouldn't matter if I made it have mobile access or not. Okay, and it does have a software update ready to put on. So, looks like this has been 55,941. Like I said, it's a fairly older model. It has the pre-facelift front on it. And uh, just shy of a uh, 100,000 miles. So it's likely they'll have Ruby done today. Um, and we can come pick her up later. Of course, that can change. And they said they'd keep me updated throughout the day. So, you know, text me to the number of my choice. And uh, that's great. I'm cruising on I-540, enjoying the ride. It's uh, gotten pretty dark out there, though. This car is a little looser than Ruby, and I noticed uh, that the um, steering was in comfort mode. I think when I get stopped, I'm going to try sports mode. It's not horribly loose. It just feels a little more responsive, maybe, than Ruby uh, in a um, I'd rather have it be less responsive sort of a way. It's not a complaint. It's just all the time, you know, if you get in a different Tesla, it's going to drive a little different. And I'm thinking on this one, I might enjoy the ride better in sport mode, which is why they give you the choice of uh, changing it. That overpass here on uh, I-540 where Ruby always breaks for no reason, it's not shadow related. Uh, this car just braked on uh, traffic aware cruise control in the exact same spot. Don't know why, but it's not a Ruby thing. So this Model S has a sunroof and I have never opened a Tesla sunroof before. Dare I risk it? Huh. Look at that. Who knew? I'm only a couple miles from home now. I'm over here at South Park, so maybe I'll give that a try since it's 78 and not raining out there. That's kind of neat. That is. That's kind of neat. And I put the car in sport mode and the steering is definitely heavier. Okay. That was nice, but that's enough for me. I'm not really a hair, uh, wind in my hair kind of a girl or sun on my head. Although it wasn't very windy and there's not a lot of sun, but still been there, done that. I'm good now. All right. This is one of my favorite spots to test how Ruby does. Light it up, baby. Light it up. <laughs> that was fun that was definitely a smoother acceleration than ruby has you know ruby has that model x shutter from time to time i don't know if it was faster or not i'm sure it was uh ruby feels plenty fast to me this feels plenty fast uh mostly it just doesn't matter which tesla you're in it's pretty fun when you do that i went to get out of the car and i'm looking and looking for the button to open the door that's right. This is a Model S. We'll have to do it the old school way. And actually push it out too. So, uh, I enjoyed my ride home. This car, Donnie, um, it has close to 100,000 miles on it. It's like at 97K. Has autopilot, but is it autopilot one? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't see... No camera is autopilot one means no camera in the side pillar. Right. It only has one in the center. If you look at the side markers, they don't have the cameras in them either. I see that. Okay. Yep. It's uh eighty-five. So it's a little newer slash nicer than the one that I looked at at inline oh. automotive sales, right? Because that was a seventy D versus an eighty five and I don't think that one had might be a little too old for autopilot. I guess I didn't find, didn't determine that for sure one way or the other. But yeah, no camera here. And like Don said, no camera here either. It drove plenty nice and I used traffic aware cruise control. I just did not, um, I just did not engage, try to engage autopilot. I figured if it was, it just lowered, the suspension just lowered itself. I figured if it was, 
AP one and I'm not used to it, why engage it if I had no real need? But traffic aware cruise control should work very similar between yeah. the two um, levels of autopilot. Are you sure our second car can't be an S? Well, I really want the Y. I know. <laughs> I like, I just enjoy driving the S. Y. It's the kitty cat welcoming committee. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm going to go ahead and um, plug the car in and charge it. We can charge until 11 o'clock with no uh, penalty on off-peak rates. And I'll just add back a little bit of charge. Probably as much as I'll be driving it today. Just seems like the polite thing to do even though... I heard that the charging situation slash ability at the service center is better now than it used to be. So I just want to make it very clear. This car was in perfectly uh, good loan out condition. It wasn't in desperate need of a vacuum or dusting or a wash or anything else. It was perfectly good condition. But I know a lot of Tesla owners that are, you know, fussy. Let's just say Don and I are fussy about our car. When we get a loaner, we like to show it a little love. It's part of the appreciation, I think, for getting a loaner. So I vacuumed it, which didn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes. And I went around the um, door frames and the trunk and the front area and just did a little wipe down there. Because, you know, when somebody comes and washes the car, they don't necessarily have time to do that kind of rub down. For new Tesla owners, I highly recommend you. Yeah, I'm out of breath because I was working maybe a little hard. Um, new Tesla owners at least once a month, uh, make sure you take a wet towel with some of that, uh, you know, um, uh, no wash spray stuff that Don uses and, um, you know, just wipe down the door frames and under the front and under the trunk. If you do it once a month, then it'll stay looking pretty nice. Um, and it just, you know, it's just one of those things that's easier to keep it clean than it is to go back and work on it when you haven't kept up. So, you know, this Model it. S seats five people, but it has an incredible amount, and I do mean incredible amount of storage. That's uh, almost as big or as big as Ruby's area. I mean, really it is. It's a big storage area. And I think, I do think it lifts up down here maybe too. I'm trying to figure out exactly since I'm not an S. Oh, here's a little pull. Duh. -huh. So, yeah. Well, I forgot to vacuum there, but it's not bad. But it does have that under area that Ruby has. So, this S and Ruby from the back, they have, you know, very comparable storage amounts. I know Bjorn has put boxes in and other people have tried to 100% totally measure the difference between the S, the X, and the 3. But as an ex-owner, I'm just going to say that back uh, is plenty of storage. And then up here in the front, this older Model S has this area that goes up underneath here. And I know some people, when they have a stroller, they put it in here, but they might try to push part of the stroller up underneath. And so, um, you know, the frunk on this S is really large also. So you got five people and a lot of room for storage. This uh, 85D was set to charge up to 90 and I think there's a good chance it's going to finish before 11 a.m. anyway. I'm back in Elon Tusk almost up to 90 percent not quite 216 miles. I noticed two things when I came into garage. Number one the car didn't wake up as quick as Ruby to notice I was here and number two these door handles have a light. When they pop out there's also a light. To make things easier for me, Don took our um, garage door controller off the wall. It's just Velcroed on there, and um, I'm carrying it with me. That way, when I get back home, well, it's mostly shutting the door now when I'm leaving and when I was pulling in earlier, but um, I'll hang it back up on the wall when I get home later because Ruby's, uh, you know, hooked up. Well, I can press the button inside of Ruby and Home Link. I don't have it automatically set, but I can definitely open the garage door from within inside Ruby without this. The Tesla app says that Ruby is ready for pickup, and we did receive uh, an estimate of what the cost was going to be. I've never seen those estimates change unless they find 
something else which I don't think has happened to us um, I'll review that when I get home but uh, I'm gonna grab Johnny and then I'm gonna grab Ruby and it was just the right uh, front upper control arm the left one they said is still in per quote tip-top shape Don says there's more potholes on the right side of the road and that could be why we had more of an issue on the right before we would have an issue on the left so white model 3 parked at the edge of our neighborhood they're visiting neighbors I stopped to chat of course I thought the quality on the backup camera well I just thought it looked a little cloudy and um, I did go out there and just very very gently clean it with some water and that helped it did it helped it was dirty but I still you know noticed that Ruby's camera probably has a little bit better um, quality a few a few more pixels per inch I think I'm enjoying my uh, drive into downtown Raleigh this afternoon in the S really I am it's uh, you know I'll be glad to be back in Ruby but I love the change of pace and uh, the thrill of also driving in a different Tesla I'm making good time this afternoon it's uh, 1 49 p.m. here as I uh, approach downtown there's my pretty watercolor sky. It's a good thing I'm so enamored with this uh, view because otherwise driving into downtown Raleigh every day would be a lot more boring. I've got Johnny and we're making our way the same trip I made this morning uh, over to uh, Highway 70 Glenwood Avenue and over to Tesla service. This is an older car that could use the uh, LTE upgrade. Well, I enjoyed my ride today. Thank you, Tesla. Well, I am so happy to have Ruby back. Aaron tells me that the squeak is gone. I cannot wait to drive her with the squeak gone. I am going to be so excited. Everything looks good. I just did the cursory walk around the car. So here's the underpass where Ruby's been braking. I'm on traffic aware cruise control here on the toll road. Let's see what she does today. There's nobody right behind me. No braking. I'm pretty sure that was the right spot. Ah, there's one more overpass down here. It must be this other one. I know Don and I are always in the right lane, and that's because we got to go right down here. It must be this one instead. Let's see. I have someone behind me, but not super close, and my foot's on the accelerator, so if she starts to really slow down, I'm ready. Yep, she slowed down from 73 to 62 now but of course there that wasn't a great test because the guy was in front of me too you just have to take my word for it that particular overpass every single time in both the loner tesla and in ruby braking well i was trying to record that ruby wasn't making any noise at all <laughs> she's been so much quieter she really has been know that I would say that there's no now that might be the um, that might be the bushings versus the now that's way more squeak she wasn't squeaking she wasn't <sighs> now there's a lot look at how I'm moving the steering wheel and there's no noise so no doubt the part that they fixed needed to be fixed but um you heard the squeak coming down the driveway and that could be the bushings i went to use the bathroom but some things have priority oh my god wow that was like seven of them I told Don we should take a ride in Ruby together and uh, check out the lack of squeak. <laughs> hey there. Hey. So the squeak's not entirely gone. Yeah, they fixed 
they fixed something for sure. There's no more squeaking when you do the wheel back and forth. Yeah, when you turn, there, but whenever you go over any kind of a bump. Uneven ground. Uneven ground. Yeah. Well, see, when the Tesla mobile service guy came out, he said it was the bushings. Right? And then the squeak got a lot worse. The squeak started happening when we were steering more or la louder. So. Yeah, well, we'll. Um, maybe we're back to it's the bushings. Mm -mm. So I think Don and I are in agreement. There's a lot less squeak. Yes. And it's, the squeak's not coming from the right side where they seem to be. Yes. did the replacement of the upper control arm today. Yeah. But there's still a lot of squeak. So I don't know if. Well, we're just going to let Tesla service know, and uh, you know, we'll just you know, probably it obviously going to end up having to go back up there. But I don't know when they'll squeeze it in. If they, I don't know if it's the control arm. Well, they said they looked at the left upper control arm today, and it was in tip-top shape and didn't need to be replaced. But they had the part if they had needed to do that, which I had asked them to do just to make sure we didn't have to go back twice. Right. Um, but there are bushings that could be squeaking and the mobile guy when he came out originally we thought it was bushings and then after he left the squeak got a lot Not worse. worse so uh, what i was going to say was um I think the fix is a good fix. It's just not a, it's an incomplete fix. Right. We, Marianne, look, and I'm, I totally agree with her. We just want Ruby to be quiet. So if it's the bushings, let's do the bushing. If it's the left control arm, let's do the left control arm. Yeah, I hesitated. One of the bushings they can change without dropping the battery pack. And the other bushing, in order to change it, they have to drop the pack. But um, the mobile service guy, Rick, he said that they do that all the time and it's no big deal and I shouldn't fret about it. So. I'm kind right, of at the point now where this, the rest of the squeak has to go. Right. I, I, I would say um, oh, she's going to talk about yeah, the Yeah, the, the part for the uh, upper right control arm was $285. Right. And the labor was two sixty two fifty today. And we do have service credit. Right. Well, so, um, well, as I told Marianne, I don't think that's a bad, uh, a ridiculous amount of repair. But you can't take your car to a shop anymore for less than five hundred dollars. So the fact this is five hundred and seventy five eighty seven nineteen yeah, with tax all together, and um, you know that's not a. Uh, and I had a loaner car, which I thoroughly car, which I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed. So, so. I, I guess uh, we'll just go th work through the process, and hopefully here uh, we'll get Ruby taken care of, and she'll be, you know, super quiet like an electric car right. ought to we're be. risking my sanity yes. if we don't fix the squeak the well, rest of the way i can't i can't take it yeah on a scale of one to ten if it was a ten now it's down to like a six so they definitely improved it well the highway is totally quiet yeah. it was starting to make noise even at highway speeds and that that's gone it that was when i was on the toll road today so a little bit what happened this afternoon, just to say, is Johnny wasn't feeling really good when I picked him up from school. And um, my focus was a little bit split when we were leaving Tesla. But um, yeah, I still love Tesla service. Uh, I just- Well, those guys I, have done good They've done us. good by us. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad. So uh, yeah, is it gonna take me another day driving up there, dropping her off and picking her up? It is, but um, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. And I had, you know, good communication and I, and I like those guys so we'll sort it out 